G'day fellow miners and welcome to another episode in my all new Digging Minecraft series. Uh, this is episode 34, my name is Armitage and today's ep we are going to be having a look at some of the improvements I have made to the villager uh, trading area. Uh, I asked you guys for some ideas. Um, on what you thought needed improving. A few people said I needed to do something with the roof, so what I did was I put in some of the new uh, different coloured or different wooden half slabs into the mix. I think it kind of breaks the roof up a bit and you get that nice kind of light effect. Let me know what you think of that. I quite like it. It's, uh, it's a bit different and it sort of breaks up the brickwork and it kind of, it almost gives it like a a feeling that there's gaps in between each of the layers because of the way the light's coming through. But uh, yeah, let me know anything of that. I also took the advice of um, a few people saying that um, separating the villages into their various uh, oh, look at this. How did? Oh, oh, that's interesting. Um. I'm going to have to pull him out of there. Uh, I guess some breeding occurred. Huh. Some illegal breeding. Anyway, I've separated them into their separate little sections. I have five stalls now on each side. Again, look here. Guys all mixed up. This villager is selling bread. Uh, he knows I'm going to kill him. Another villager selling cookies. Um... There must have been some unauthorized breeding going on. This is this is the only problem with this system at the moment. But anyway, I'll get to that. Um, villager down there. Um, I'll just pull these guys out. I have I have little secret ways of doing this stuff. Um, but what I have done is in order to uh, facilitate sorting. Actually, we'll just go up here and have a look at the roof from the top. This is the roof from above anyway and this is the new part of the new sorting system here basically what I have done is I've kept the I've kept the the design for the uh, villager breeding system um, that Doc M uh, did the tutorial for so I've kept that and basically what I do is I I've kept the this system where I pop the minecart out and pull out a villager out of here, and but now I, I um I send them over to this little holding area here, and I have this uh, selection panel where I can um, uh, send like so. If I pulled this guy out here, this priest, I'd check his trade, and he's trading a diamond sword and four emeralds for a sharpness 2 sword. Probably not really that worth it. Um, although sharpness 2, not bad. Uh, so he would get pulled out when I activate this button. The minecart would pop out here, it would pull him out and send him here. That, this is where I do the, like I check his trade when he's here. If it's no good, I just use the standard uh, the standard um, pre-powered dispenser. So back here, I think, is a torch. Why is there a gap there? Why is there a gap all the way along here? Fill that up. So here is a torch, which keeps this dispenser constantly powered. And what happens when a dispenser is constantly powered is any kind of uh, redstone update that's adjacent to it. So this button powering this block will trigger it and when this block unpowers, when the button pops out, it triggers it again. So you get that short burst of the lava coming out from that lava bucket. So you can kill it. and then you just break the uh, break the minecart manually and put it back into the system here. Um, I wish I had more villagers in here to actually show you how how the whole system works. Anyway, once once I've decided that uh, that the villager has a plausible trade and I'm short of villagers in, in the uh, in the actual trading area, I'll select, you know, if it's a librarian, I select librarian, powers the 
powers the um, you can quite see that so it flips that track it powers the cart flips this track and then it sends it up this rail here and into along here now depending on which depending on which button is selected these tracks will change so the default is they're pointing towards the back so this is pretty much exactly the same as any of the rail selection systems I use so it uses the compact track selector but what happens is the minecart comes up here it goes into this water chute the minecart hits that uh, cactus and breaks the uh, the villager goes uh, down that hole and drops into his allotted area and the minecart will either occasionally it'll go backwards most of the time it'll go down either this hole or this hole and very 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 rarely it will land on the cactus and get destroyed but that is incredibly rare I've done oh, I've done hundreds of tests um, and it, it very rarely happens and there's a painting here because it is actually possible for a minecart with a villager in it to drop down this hole so the painting's there to stop it from dropping it kind of hits that painting and it gets pushed forward a little bit and then it breaks on the cactus and down here is pitch black because I have ice under here as you can see and the uh, the ice the um, minecart gets washed along these trenches there's three of them um, and then down to the end here and then it gets washed out and drops I'm having real trouble turning here and drops oops I better, I better close that door this is just a little entry for servicing and so forth <coughs> pardon me <clears throat> and then that drops out of this chute straight here so you just collect the minecart up and place it back in this, exactly the same system on this side so the uh, the this track gets powered this flips uh, the carts go up it's basically a mirror of the other side um, actually this is something I need to add to the other side I haven't put in yet oops um, these glass blocks um, they, the obviously the villager can pass through them in the minecart <coughs> um, but once the minecart breaks the villager is actually uh, without these glass blocks which go all the way to the end is actually capable of jumping and jumping back uh, towards this end of the water you can actually fight the water currents because sometimes they just act weird um, and a lot of the time they'll jump up and down on the cactus and sometimes they'll die or they actually can get back out and wander around in here you might notice that this is the old ooh, this is the old monster or the old mob spawning system I've completely disabled it I've reclaimed a lot of the materials from it the um, took down the wooden signs use them in a lot of this because there's a lot of wooden signs involved in the water flow actually here we've got I've dug out a kind of a section here to uh, get in and test so I need to actually I'll fix that now I need to get some more glass to make it uh, complete um, which I have plenty of glass because I'm doing another project so yeah it's 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 pretty actually it's actually pretty effective what I might do I um, this is the wiring down here which leads down to the back of the um, the selection panels uh, or I've mob proofed all the wiring so no mobs can spawn in the wiring there's nothing worse than hearing a zombie or a skeleton in the wall in a little space where they just decided to spawn um, and yes yeah, so here's the uh, other side of the um, the other side of the shoot for for this side for where the um, minecarts go down so the, actually the easiest way for me to show you this actually working is to go to my test world um, where where I designed the whole um, designed the whole system well not the whole system but I designed the, the actual minecart removal system and uh, recovery system 
So that's that's what it's looking like now. Um, I got rid of the trees. Uh, I shortened the fences, and also the uh, I want to say a big thanks to uh, Trindabro. Obviously, he's a League of Legends fan for suggesting the cactuses for removing the villages from the minecarts. Um, but we're going to have a closer look at that uh, over on the test world. So I will see you on the test world. Okay, here we are on the test world. Um, I've quickly switched back to the default texture pack just to um, give you a sort of a better idea of the you know stuff that's used in this. Um, now I need to fill up my fill up my uh, testificate chamber test chamber a few hundred villages oh that's right I've got to probably enough and we'll just position them so that they are pushed into the corner and basically uh, a fairly similar setup I've got a dispenser here which has uh, nine minecarts in it um, and essentially what I do is uh, I trigger it here so uh, villager will come out go across here and you can see that the glass is one block above the track uh, so you can only go through it with a with a minecart but it's important that it's that it where the water is it's only one blocks airspace above t to stop the testificates from forcing their way back they even even with that they can still manage it I put in ice blocks here to see if I could um, remedy it but they're not really necessary but this is this is essentially how it looks when uh, so it hits the cactus minecart breaks and goes off down that little uh, falls down one of these holes and goes gets washed down to our holding area down here and the testificate goes into the basement there just for now I didn't really have them going anywhere and they take a little bit of damage when they hit the cactus sometimes but um, it's not near enough to get them killed and I have water breaks in the um, see that one went down the third I have water breaks in the where the villager stalls are but you can see here we'll just go again so that goes down there I actually haven't seen one fall down the back for a while but I, I, it needs to be there because it, it is possible And I've done this test on this system probably, I uh, have to be f between 40 and 60 times and I think I may have lost like maybe two minecarts overall. As you can see, the forward momentum just carries the minecart with the, the combination of the water flow and the forward momentum of the actual cart just carries it past the cactus. And as you can see, you need this one because the cat, the cart can actually fly all the way over. So you need the, you need this one. Of course, you need because the water. There's a there's a, a block drop next to the cactus because you can't have a solid block next to it, obviously. And then uh, the second one is needed because sometimes the cart overshoots. There we go. I think that's. Yep. So that's the last one. So if we, oops. If we go over here to where all our carts are sitting and we'll pick them up, go to our survival inventory, you'll see there's nine carts again. And obviously that that where these I haven't so that the carts are returned close to the dispensers rather than, you know, having to jump down a hole. But I could do this all day and very rarely will I ever lose a cart. I actually want to see if I can lose a cart while I'm recording. I might just do one. Ooh, see, even that cart even bounced on that cactus a little bit, but it's it's not enough for it to actually destroy the object. 
Oop. So we're not having any issues with uh, minecarts getting destroyed just yet. Right, another one goes past. Right, and another one. Yeah. That's it. Oops, so if I go back over here again and we go to my you see I have no carts. And nine carts. So it's a pretty reliable way of removing the villagers from the minecarts and getting the minecarts back so the minecarts aren't destroyed. I tried a number of different designs. Here's a, another design over here that I was trying that uh, involved shoving the minecart into the cactus like this and the set, if set up properly the villager would always appear would, oops, would always end up on uh, this block here that I'm looking at, this sand block but the problem is is that the minecart would often fall here. So that was pretty unreliable. There was, I saw on Reddit, another design that involved lava that's similar to this one, but it had the lava right there. So a block of lava right there. Uh, actually, uh, no, down a little bit below. And it had a trapdoor up here and a trapdoor here, and the minecart would fall and hit the lava and then apparently it, would, it was supposed to pop and land on one side like right basically on this block or this block but I could never get it like every single time the um, every single time the uh, cart the mine cart would fall into the lava and get destroyed like a hundred percent of the time <coughs> so a big thank you to Trinderbro for um, mentioning that you know bumping minecarts into, this is the original design after Trinderbro said that, that bumping the minecarts into the um, cactus would uh, break them. This is why I've got this too thick wall around here because that forces the villager to pop out of the minecart and stand on this block which would wash him off the edge and down into here with these other villagers that are hiding. Now these are all the villagers that I just sent through. But uh, yeah, um, thanks to Trinderbro for pointing that out for me. Very, very helpful tip. Um, and just with a bit of, you know, a bit of messing about, a bit of work, and kind of, uh, um, kind of, um, what's the word? Uh, adapting the cactus from using the... Uh, the, the, that lava method that I talked about so it's, it's sort of an adaption on the lava method I also played around with trying to wire the control panels to figure out how the easiest way to wire the control panels was and I ended up uh, just winging it with that but yeah thank you Trinderbro f for your awesome suggestion um, uh, very very helpful uh, much appreciated it is a very very good reliable means of um, removing the villagers from their minecarts because as I said before I was pushing them into the uh, the areas like one by one and then having to get up and break the minecarts with a pick but this is all pretty much automatic so the only manual task is actually checking the villager for his trade and then pushing the button that corresponds to his uh, little stall. So yeah, pretty much that's it for today. Um, I do have another, oh, I was thinking of using trip lines and stuff as well. I do have another um, project I'm working on at the moment. I've started to finally do something uh, with my uh, sheep, put in a like a proper wool farming area I guess not really farming I suppose the you know different colored wools if I ever need different colored wools I haven't really had that issue but whatever I finally decided to do something with it and I'm going to add a bit of a uh, an architectural feature to that so that's going to come out quite nice hopefully um, but I'll save that for another episode I'm about halfway through that project now um, but uh, the villager sorting area is 
pretty much finished with, uh, apart from a few issues with the breeding, but I'm going to have to just wear them. So um, thanks again to all the people that contributed ideas to the uh, to the villager trading area. And thank you again, a big thank you to Trindabro for his uh, idea of the um, of the cactus um, using cactus to break the minecast to get the villagers out very very good slightly modified your idea but you are like responsible for me you know coming up with this design because you suggested the cactus in the first place so thanks again mate made uh, made the system a lot more uh, automated but uh, that's it for now the sun's going down on the test world uh, very short episode I thank you for your patience on waiting for my episodes I'm gonna try and keep them short I keep saying that and I never I never stick to it and then I waffle on like I am now but anyway that's it for today uh, thank you for watching guys and keep on digging